Hello, my name's Cathy Sanders, and I'm one of the lecturing staff in the School of Anatomy and Human Biology. A major in Anatomy and Human Biology is an integrative exploration of what it means to be human. The major brings together many different and separate disciplines to understand the human condition from both biological and social perspectives. It's a ticket to ownership of your own body, exploring how it is constructed, how it works, why it works that way, where it came from, how it is shaped by the physical and social environment in which you live, and what it means to society. A major in anatomy and human biology is excellent preparation for professional postgraduate programs such as medicine, dentistry and podiatry. It's also a highly suitable complement for other biomedical majors and can enrich studies in social sciences including anthropology, archaeology, linguistics, psychology and the visual arts. For each Level 1 and Level 2 unit taken as part of the Anatomy and Human Biology major, you'll spend about four to five hours a week in face-to-face -face lectures, laboratory sessions and tutorials. In Level 3, you can expect to spend a total of about 13 hours a week in similar contact. Of course, there are some additional scheduled out-of-class activities, such as assignments, and, as is the case for all university units, you'll need to spend about twice as much time again on study and preparation in your own time. Remember, a full-time university enrolment has about the same workload as a full-time job. Be aware that you'll be studying human cadaveric remains at at least one stage of the major, and possibly more, depending on your choice of units. In the first year of the Anatomy and Human Biology major, you'll study two core units, Human Biology 1, Becoming Human, and Human Biology 2, Being Human. In Human Biology 1, Becoming Human, you'll be introduced to the structure and function of our bodies from the level of molecules, genes, cells and tissues through to human reproduction and embryological development. How we become human is explored from the perspective of both the individual and the species. We bring this information together through the study of human genetics and evolution, including links to other living primates. Human Biology 2, Being Human, explores the biology of being human in today's world with an emphasis on how humans interact with the environment and with each other. This unit examines the structure, function and control of human body systems such as the cardiovascular, respiratory, digestive and nervous systems, human nutrition, growth and ageing. You will also study how the environment and evolution have shaped our appearance and genes and the impact of genes and lifestyle on human disease. In your second year, you need to complete one core unit from each of two streams, social and structural. Your other units will be comprised of broadening units and electives from other level two anatomy and human biology units or other disciplines. The social stream units from which one core unit needs to be taken are biological anthropology, human adaptation and variation and human reproductive biology. Biological anthropology, human adaptation and variation is concerned with the nature of variation and the way in which the biology and behaviour of humans are influenced by genetic, developmental, ecological and cultural factors. The unit shows how the same ecological principles which have made sense of animal population biology can be applied to humans and looks at some of the mechanisms of how adaptations emerge during the interaction between genes and environment in development and how cultural and biological factors in human behaviour are linked. The unit Human Reproductive Biology will provide you with a sound understanding of human reproduction from biological, social and cultural perspectives. It looks at the structural and functional basis of human reproduction from the reproductive organs themselves, through the formation of eggs and sperm, fertilisation, development of the very early embryo and the older foetus, to how a mother's body adapts to pregnancy, preparation for birth and reproductive ageing. You will examine social and ethical issues in reproduction, including sexuality, infertility, birth control, and the impact of reproductive technologies such as IVF and cloning. Units in the structural stream include human structure and development, human functional anatomy, and human organs and systems. 
Human structure and development provides an understanding of the overall plan of the human body by looking at it region by region, for example, the thorax, the abdomen, the pelvis, and the limbs. It correlates gross and microscopic structure with function and development of the various body systems. Anatomical understanding is enhanced through learning about the principles of imaging, such as X-ray, CT scans, and MRI. The emphasis of core concepts and their logical extensions, rather than a compendium of anatomical facts. Human functional anatomy concentrates upon study of the entire upper and lower limbs, describing joints and joint movements, muscle groups, and patterns of innovation. It looks at specialised functions of the limbs, such as how we grasp and manipulate tools with our hands, and how we walk. This is followed by study of the anatomy of the head and neck, and study of important functions such as chewing, swallowing, and eye movement. The unit Human Organs and Systems provides a thorough account of how body cells and tissues are arranged and function within each of the body's organ systems. Emphasis is placed upon the relationship between the structural characteristics of tissues and organs and their functions. The unit provides excellent preparation for advanced study in pathology, cell biology and molecular biology. At level 3, you need to study one of the core units, Human Biology Applications and Investigations 1 or 2, and three other level 3 Anatomy and Human Biology units from a choice of 5. These other level 3 units fall into clusters which follow naturally from the social and structural streams at level 2. However, there's no requirement to continue on the level 2 streams. Any level 3 units from which you have the necessary prerequisites, plus one of the applications and investigations unit, are sufficient. One applications and investigations unit is offered each semester. They cover the same basic themes, but offer these in the context of the other level 3 units being taught in that semester. In particular, they each include a project based upon issues arising from those other units. The project can be experimental, survey-based, analytical, or an application such as teaching in a Level 2 class. The Applications and Investigations units are about learning how to do and communicate science. They help you to establish necessary scientific skills, including definition of problems and questions, appropriate design of experiment and selection of methods, creative thinking, acquisition, manipulation and interpretation of data, and presentation of investigations, both as written and verbal reports. You will learn specific investigative techniques, including use of the library and databases, statistics and image capture. You'll be drawn into discussions on the ethics of experimentation and the nature of scientific method and the history and philosophy of science. The flexible structure of the unit allows for reading, tutorials and practical project work in areas of particular interest to individuals or small groups of students. The other Level 3 units, of which you will choose three, are Biological Anthropology, Genes and Society, Human Evolutionary Ecology, Human Reproduction, Human Structure and Function, and Cells, Tissues and Development. As their names suggest, they cover a range of topics including human variation, life history theory, contemporary problems in reproductive biology, comparative anatomy, repair of tissue damage, and much, much more. Depending on which units you choose, you could dissect cadaveric material, use sophisticated technology to image cells, participate in a visit to an IVF laboratory, and design methods for answering sophisticated scientific questions. Students who have completed a major in anatomy and human biology can apply to do a fourth year of study known as an honours year, or may proceed to two-year courses in Masters of Anatomical Science or Master of Human Biology. Honours builds on what you have learned in your undergraduate degree, with a particular emphasis on the development of research skills. Most of the year is devoted to your own research project, which you will develop in consultation with your supervisor. 
Potential honours students are encouraged to talk to a range of staff members about their research areas and their capacity to take on honours students before settling on a topic and supervisor. The research project culminates in the submission of a thesis at the end of your year of study, which may commence at the beginning or the middle of the year. It is during this honours year that an undergraduate student grows into an actual scientist. The master's courses make available advanced training in either the anatomical sciences or human biology. They enable students to upgrade their knowledge and develop investigative skills by participating in projects, critical review of literature, collection of material, either field, experimental or literature, and the processing, analysis and evaluation of data. A major in anatomy and human biology is obviously suitable preparation for graduate studies in medicine, dentistry, podiatry, nursing, occupational health and safety, and a whole range of other clinical and related professions. It would also provide suitable background for people interested in paid or volunteer work with aid agencies, teaching, and less formal careers in public science education, for example, journalism or in science museums, also follow sensibly from this major with its strong emphasis on communication skills. Thanks for watching this presentation on the Anatomy and Human Biology major stream. I hope you found this information useful and I look forward to seeing you around campus one day.